100% chance of wine. Sponsored by The Lodge at Columbia Point. Today on 100% Chance of Wine, we made our way out to Yakima Valley Vintners, and I'm joined by Brad. You guys have a really great thing going on here. It's a teaching winery, um, especially with the wine industry and just how much is, it's growing here in Washington. Tell me more about the background and how you guys got started. Sure. Well, to tie in with that, um, gosh, we got started in 2007. At the time, there were about 350 wineries in the state. Now we're nearing with active wineries a little over a thousand. Mm -hmm. So in that 11 year span, almost three times growth. And in anticipation of that, we started this program in order to support industry. Now over the last 11 years, we've been able to graduate students out of both the viticulture and the uh, enology or winemaking side of things with our winery operations class. And uh, we've got folks in leadership positions in wineries all over the Northwest now. What are some of the classes? That you offer? Uh, we, we, uh, in, in the first year of the program for both disciplines, it's pretty much the same track. So they get some basics on winemaking, a good understanding of chemistry and the math that's going to be necessary for both sides. Mm -hmm. um, and then we get involved with uh, viticulture classes for both. So we want both the winemaking side and the folks who are going to be working in the vineyard to have a taste of what each other's side of this project is all about. Mm -hmm. And so our, our winemakers have learned about viticulture in a basic way. They understand the plants and what they're doing, when they're doing it, and how to get the best out of them. While at the same time, the VIT students are learning about the basics of making wine and what's going to be the end product that comes from their efforts as well. And it's very hands-on here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we don't want people watching wine being made. Um, the, if they don't walk out of here in the fall with purple hands, we've not done our job. Right. What are some of the things they get to do um, back in the lab and things that they get to work oh, on? Sure, everything that would happen in a normal winery. So mm -hmm. we, we try to replicate those processes and we work really hard with industry to do that. So from lab testing of the grapes as they're coming in in the fall, making sure that uh, they've got the sugar levels that they want and the acids have, have come to where they would like to use them in the, in the wine and to where they're going to have the best chances of success. On the vineyard side of things, we've got a, a small teaching vineyard that's here on site and they get the chance to go out and manage that vineyard. So it's seasonal. We have four classes that are set up for the vineyard side um, that take them through an overview of the entire year and then seasonally each thing that's happening in the vineyard. So they're getting hands-on work in helping manage our vineyard here, which is the world's smallest live certified vineyard for sustainability. Right. So. And do you notice a lot of the students, do they stay here locally, or where do they usually end up? I'd say most of them stay locally. We have internships in both that first year and second year where they get introduced to industry and get an opportunity to work in what they're targeting mm -hmm. and to see if it's a good fit. And then um, many of them have jobs uh, by the time they graduate. We've got nearly 100 percent placement um, for those that we've been able to c continue to keep track of after they've left and many of them have jobs before they complete their degrees and so we've offered the entire program in the evening to accommodate that so that those that do get jobs can finish their degree so you know, a lot of the time our, I think our average is, is a three-year for a two-year degree right. just because it's in that part-time mode and people are working as well and supporting their families and you also have space here where they may start up a winery and you're still allowing them um, the usage and for yeah. them to grow as well absolutely we've got two incubator spaces here that have fledged new wineries new winemakers um, over the last 10 years and so they get to rent space from us share the equipment helps with offsetting their initial startup costs until they can get wine in bottle and have that wine available for purchasing as well would you guys say you've made such a big impact from you know starting out the school to seeing these these um, students go through the program that you've really helped them out in their in their journey I, I think so and you know, what's it's really our hope mm -hmm. that that's, that's occurred in the, in the process. We get really good feedback from our advisory committee. So all of our curriculum, we make sure it gets reviewed on a three-year basis, rotating through. So all of our classes get reviewed by industry peers who advise us on what's necessary, what they see happening trend-wise. Are there things changing equipment-wise? What are they, what's their need? so that we can make sure that that's incorporated and our materials that we're teaching aren't dated. Mm -hmm. Last thing we want to do is have to have somebody go through our program and then have them go to work and have to be completely retrained. We want them, you know, shovel ready as it were, yeah. you know, ready, and, to, ready to hit the ground. Speaking of that, some of the equipment that you have, very up to date mm -hmm. and kind of new as well that's, that's coming on board, um, yeah. they get to work with that as well. Yeah, exactly. So our, our, our uh, press for processing the wine is digitally controlled. Mm -hmm. um, all of our cooling systems for our tanks are 
exactly what you would see in the larger wineries, just on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. And so that's where they kind of get to bridge between our small scale operation. We do between three and 700 cases per year for our winery specifically. Um, and that's mostly due to size and what we're able to do out of this tasting room. We're scaling that up a bit. Uh, next year we'll be opening up a second tasting room up in Yakima with a new project up there and, and co-housed with the art gallery in a new event space. Mm -hmm. And so we, we anticipate that increase and we've incorporated that into our production as well. So by next year we'll have plenty of wine for that second spot. Yeah. And more opportunities for students to work here as well.